بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس ویلکم اگین ٹو اے نیو لیکچر ود ریفرنس ٹو مانیٹری اینڈ فزیکل فریم ورک ان اسلامک فائنانس ود دی کورس کوڈ آف ایم بی ایف سیون زیرو سیون فرام کام سیٹس انسٹیٹیوٹ آف انفارمیشن ٹیکنالوجی ورچوئل کیمپس اسلام آباد اسٹوڈنٹس ایز یو نو In the last lecture, in the last two lectures, I promised to develop a mathematical model which can empirically be estimated uh, in Islamic framework. So, inshallah, today we will start that model and it may take a couple of lectures to complete because uh, the macro model is generally big. And uh, in conventional framework, there are complete books and chapters written on the macroeconomic model. But since our course is uh, not only uh, is not specific to the macroeconomic modeling, uh, we will only focus on the fiscal perspective of the macroeconomic framework in order to develop certain model. And our focus will be introducing the zakat as the main multiplier factor and then introducing incorporating this multiplier factor we will try to derive different types of multiplier on the pattern of conventional macroeconomic macroeconomic and fiscal framework so students before we further proceed let me briefly review what we have done in the last two lectures in the last two lectures, our focus had been on fiscal policy as automatic stabilizers. We discuss in detail how fiscal policy tools function as automatic stabilizers in Islamic framework vis-a-vis uh, -vis the conventional, uh, uh, conventional fiscal policy tools. Uh, in uh, Islamic framework, the automatic stabilizer, uh, the additional automatic stabilizer is zakah and we discuss the difference between the conventional automatic stabilizer and the Islamic uh, uh, automatic stabilizer. In, uh, conventional, uh, uh, in conventional framework, uh, progressive taxes and pro proportional taxes function as automatic stabilizers, particularly at the time of booming economy. But uh, uh, during the recessionary period, uh, uh, the transfer payments generally perform the function of automatic stabilizer in the conventional framework, but that is not by divine. In uh, Islamic framework, by divine and in intuitively it is part of the system to pay and receive zakah. Therefore, uh, the uh, Islamic in, in Islamic framework, automatic stabilizer is more strong than the stabilizers functioning in the conventional economic system. So students, uh, there is no way to exclude zakat from the fiscal framework of Islam. But uh, the transfer payments uh, in conventional system, uh, they can be uh, written off, they can be condoned at times, particularly when the economic circumstances are not favorable for the state. But in Islamic framework, since it is obligatory, it is divine law, it is uh, ordained by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, therefore it is part and parcel of the Islamic society and the Islamic state is bound to collect taxes, uh, you know, collect taxes in addition to zakah. So zakah is a mandatory part of the fiscal framework in Islam. We discussed then uh, the fiscal policy in conventional and Islamic framework in detail. I will not go into the detail uh, here because we are just uh, reviewing what we have done in the last two lectures. Uh, we also uh, studied the significance of zakah, how zakah is uh, significant and uh, we discussed in detail the eight heads clearly mentioned and described in Quran and Sunnah according to Sunnah and then in the present day how uh, these eight heads can be uh, extended or can be researched 
in accordance with the need of the modern time. Uh, I also shared with you uh, the concept of uh, resources which are generally considered as scarce uh, in, in Islamic concept according to the Islamic teachings the concept of resources is that all the resources belong to Allah and we function as agent on this earth on this in this uniform in this universe uh, uh, I, I also uh, described uh, the function of taxation uh, in Islamic framework generally uh, Islamic uh, financial system and the Islamic fiscal policy supports direct taxation more than the indirect taxation uh, the distributive justice which is uh, one of the chief goal or chief objective the main thing or the, the, or the driving force in Islamic f fiscal policy uh, basically is pursued with the following three objectives uh, number one guarantee of fulfillment of the basic needs and number two reduction of inequalities that we discussed in detail and number three purification of donors inner self and their wealth so inner satisfaction by performing the duties to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, 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 acting uh, and acting upon the obligation of uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in terms of payment of zakat and uh, even infaq and infaq fees lillah and charity in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala students uh, these were the topics which we uh, deliberated and we discussed and studied in the last two lectures well today we'll uh, as i mentioned in the last lecture that uh, uh, the objective of our uh, course is to develop some macroeconomic model uh, which could be estimated and uh, uh, I was successful in uh, collecting the material from uh, different journals, from different uh, published articles. Uh, particularly, uh, I, I, I got supported from uh, the material from International Islamic University Malaysia, which uh, where the scholars uh, have been working since long on the Islamic financial system and the fiscal policy in Islamic framework. So I will share with you, we will derive the model and uh, hopefully we will be successful in developing a macroeconomic model in, uh, in terms of fiscal policy. Uh, why I, I discussed in the last lecture why we are uh, going to develop a macro model uh, the simple answer is if uh, we go on discussing halal and haram what is uh, allowed what is not allowed and uh, all these things are uh, discussed independent of the conventional system and we don't have any uh, model to estimate in parallel with the conventional system then i think there will be less advantage of studying this course so uh, the purpose of studying this course is ultimately develop a macro economic model uh, in the line of fiscal policy. So uh, hopefully when uh, you learn uh, how to uh, empirically estimate, when you learn how to develop this model uh, which is empirically testable, uh, if not all of you but some of you definitely will be motivated to, to do further research in this area and specialize in the area of Islamic finance which is not only theory uh, rather it is uh, practicable and it is empirically testable and uh, the model which uh, I will be uh, sharing with you uh, it can be modified it can be uh, amended it can, some more variables can be added to it uh, this is the beginning uh, this is not the end of the Islamic financial system or the fiscal policy in Islamic framework this is just the beginning so students you can uh, uh, further work on it and in future when you uh, go for the higher studies either uh, to the universities in Pakistan or abroad uh, at least this model will remind you that uh, the Islamic framework is testable and practically 
uh, research can be done by collecting data or conducting survey on different variables related to the macroeconomic variables. With these words, now we move on to the next topic. Our next topic is uh, national income accounting in Islamic framework. This is the first lecture in macroeconomics. If you remember, if you have studied macroeconomics, the generally national income accounts is the beginning of the macroeconomic uh, concepts. Uh, national income accounts, uh, we will discuss national income accounts, what are the components of national income accounts and how these components are uh, arranged differently from the conventional uh, uh, macroeconomic uh, uh, national income accounts. So students, uh, uh, the, the introduction is, uh, uh, let me uh, briefly introduce uh, what will be the major uh, components included in the macroeconomic framework, national income accounts uh, in Islamic perspective. And uh, these uh, variables and these dimensions are uh, not part and parcel of the conventional uh, fiscal policy in macroeconomic uh, framework. Uh, well, uh, zakat, which shares wealth between contributors with less fortunate, this concept will be incorporated. So, zakat, uh, the variable of zakat will be included in the national income accounts from two perspectives. Number one, uh, the part of the income, national income, which is earned by the rich people, and uh, they are included in the category of zakat payers. On the other side, there are zakat recipients. So, consumption uh, will have two components. Number one, uh, the consumption of the zakat payers and the consumption of the zakat recipients. So, we will be dividing our economy into two simple components. One, the zakat payers and the zakat recipients. Uh, we know zakat is uh, the means of purification and it helps uh, uh, growing economy. It helps in the growth of the micro economy uh, and uh, uh, basically uh, uh, the, uh, the selfishness and the greed uh, uh, is broken and it is shattered uh, with the introduction of zakat uh, because when a person pays zakat, uh, his selfishness is completely surrendered uh, before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in terms of Islamic teachings, if he is the believer. Uh, next, uh, uh, Muslim takes it an investment to get rewards uh, hereafter. Uh, it is not the uh, reward which we observe empirically in macroeconomic framework. Rather, uh, there is big incentive for the zakat payer that he is uh, actually investing in the way of Allah and uh, uh, his uh, mal, his assets are purified and uh, in, the, in, the, in the world year after he will receive uh, definitely uh, the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, we will also keep in mind uh, uh, while discussing and developing the model that uh, economic imbalances are removed. Uh, economic economic imbalances are controlled and removed the, by the introduction of the institution of zakah. Uh, the trust is discharged because a portion of our wealth legally belongs to the other people and uh, the wealth which belongs to the other people, the zakat payers have to hand over this amount of wealth to their, uh, their rightful uh, owner. Uh, these things in the background as an introduction. Let us now move on to the national income accounts. Uh, students, so while discussing the national income accounts, uh, national income accounts are constructed in such a way that the aggregate econo economic variables are useful for economic analysis. So this is our uh, presumption in Islamic framework. Uh, students. GDP, uh, generally how in conventional system GDP is uh, defined, 
cost it is the market value of all final goods and services produced in the economy uh, during certain time period and generally the period of calculating gdp is on annual basis but uh, this annual amount of gdp is based on monthly calculation of the value addition to the national economy and uh, quarterly calculation of the output produced in the economy and uh, even biannual and all types of uh, uh, calculations and the records are uh, basically uh, uh, recorded uh, in included in the development of gdp uh, one main difference between gdp and the gnp is uh, gdp is gross domestic product and gnp is gross national product as is obvious from the name when we say gross domestic product it means um, uh, all the goods and services produced within the national boundaries within for example if we are discussing gdp of pakistan it would mean all the goods and services produced within pakistan now whether uh, these goods and services are produced by pakistanis or foreigners if they are working within pakistan if they are producing output within the national boundary this is known as gdp and uh, uh, in gnp when we uh, gnp is a little broader concept uh, gnp also includes uh, part of the earning abroad for example pakistanis are working abroad and they are contributing they are renting their services and they are generating income and they are sending this income to pakistan in the same way uh, foreigners are working in pakistan they are earning and they also uh, send their income abroad so the net of this uh, uh, flows of uh, factor income is added to gdp to get the final figure of gnp so students you must be familiar with uh, this concept gdp with this is very uh, basic lesson or concept in uh, macro economics uh, now coming to the concept of gdp in islamic framework in islamic framework uh, when we say gdp uh, generally conventional framework of gdp uh, does not distinguish between the halal goods uh, the permissible items permissible goods and services and the non permissible or uh, prohibited goods in accordance with the islamic teachings so we don't distinguish between the permissible and non permissible items produced uh, within the national boundaries but uh, mm, uh, this uh, distinction is very pertinent while calculating gdp in islamic framework in islamic framework when we define gdp it is the market value of all final halal goods only and services produced within an islamic state during a specific period of time and this period may be one year usual is the practice of calculating gdp for one year but it can also be calculated on quarterly basis so this will be the main difference so in the calculation of gdp for an islamic economy uh, the non permissible items uh, are compelled to be excluded only halal goods and so what are the halal goods the goods which are permissible which are allowed to produce sell by uh, in according to the islamic teachings and uh, the goods uh, uh, which are uh, otherwise halal which are otherwise permissible but uh, uh, if some non permissible uh, transactions or non permissible modes of financing have been used uh, again uh, this will not make the component of uh, gdp of an islamic economy the example of uh, this uh, permissible items but uh, uh, non permissible modes of finance is uh, suppose a car manufacturing plant is installed in pakistan uh, which is the islamic republic of pakistan and uh, uh, in the car manufacturing uh, plant if 
the capital if the capitalists if the owners if the shareholders of the car manufacturing plant they borrow money from the banking system from the financial institutions which are run on interest based so obviously uh, the uh, interest based loans are being incorporated in order to expand the business or in order to run the business of car manufacturing now uh, now as far as manufacturing of car production of car is concerned it is permissible there is uh, there is no harm in producing manufacturing cars but uh, in order to meet the capital requirement if uh, the shareholders uh, opt uh, interest based modes of financing then perhaps there will be a problem similarly the manufacturing of a car is permissible but if uh, the uh, manufacturers mm, are uh, selling it uh, selling their cars on uh, the on the receipt of advance money and uh, if uh, uh, the advance money if there is some interest element involved in this advance money or some uh, insurance uh, which is based on interest uh, is involved uh, then again although the sale and purchase of and the manufacturing of cars is otherwise allowed but since at different stages of transactions the and, and the prohibited modes of finance are involved so in this case again uh, it will be it will not be uh, uh, considered for the gdp so the measures will be taken to remove these lapses remove these interest based transactions for the better substitution of the islamic modes of finance which we have been discussing at length during the, uh, the course of this subject uh students now uh, the national income is measured in two ways number 1 uh, the product approach and number 2 is income approach <coughs> uh the product approach and the income approach product approach in convention system the product approach means when the value of all final goods and services the goods which are produced and their fi final value at the market price is calculated and this is known as the national income calculated uh, by product approach and the income approach in the income approach we will also discuss in detail but in convention system uh, the income approach means when uh, gdp is calculated from the payments made to the factors of production involved in the production process for example uh, according to convention system there are four factors land labor capital entrepreneur so capital receiving interest uh, land receiving rents and uh, the workers or the labor receiving wages uh, and and the entrepreneur receiving profit and because in convention system we do not uh, the 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 capital and the management are two uh, different factors uh but in uh, islamic framework um, uh, we will discuss what are the income sources in detail how the equation can be built in islamic frame the development of islamic framework uh at length we will assume uh no indirect taxes and no depreciation so uh, although in the original equation the indirect taxes and uh, the depreciation uh, will be included but uh, for the conceptual understanding we will drop uh, these two items one the indirect taxes and two the depreciation uh national income accounting continuing it is uh, assume that the amount of zakat disbursed to the recipients may be less or equal to the zakat fund depending on the economic situations uh because economic when we say uh, depending upon the economic situations the income from zakat the revenue collected through zakat and the amount of zakat which is disbursed and distributed among uh, the zakat recipients 
definitely there may be an equilibrium or imbalance between these two sides. Uh, generally, more zakah is collected when the economic conditions are better and people are earning more. And uh, even uh, some of these people uh, crossed uh, cro cross their, their their boundary from zakat recipient to the boundary of zakat payers when the economic circumstances are favorable. <coughs> the income sources are improved, and that is why. Uh, people's ability to pay zakat is also improved. Uh, but uh, during the recessionary period, the situation is reversed. As I explained, in case of uh, the better economic circumstances, the reverse will be the case at the time of recession. Uh, because in recession, the economic activity is slowed down and the income is low. Therefore, uh, some of the zakat payers uh, may cross their boundary uh, to the boundary of zakat recipients. So, now how in this situation the Islamic State will manage uh, the zakat money? Because uh, at the time of boom or better economic conditions, more zakat is collected and less zakat is distributed. But uh, at the time of recession, uh, more zakat is to be distributed and less zakat is likely to be received. Uh, the deficit uh, should be therefore covered by the zakat surplus accumulated from the previous years when there were good times on uh, regarding economic conditions of the economy. Zakat uh, deficit generally is uh, discouraged in Islam. Uh, why the zakat deficit is discouraged in Islam? Because uh, must be something wrong. Must be some of the zakat payers who otherwise uh, are in, in are included in the line of zakat payers, but somehow they manage to escape paying zakat. Uh, this is one of the possibilities of you know the creation of zakat deficit. Students, now, uh, <coughs> uh, before we, uh, uh, now given these concepts, given these concepts regarding the zakat payment, zakat money, fluctuation in the zakat revenues, and distribution of zakat, and the situation in recession, situation in boom or better economic circumstances, keeping all this in view, now, first of all, we will discuss the conventional approach and then we will come back to the Islamic approach and so that we could develop uh, some macroeconomic model in Islamic framework. So uh, according to the conventional system, uh, if we assume we consider three sector economy, closed economy, simple three sector closed economy, uh, the aggregate demand has three major components, uh, C for consumption, I for interest investment and G for government expenditures. Now in this equation, Y indicates national output or the real GDP of the economy and uh, T is the taxation and uh, capital I is the investment and R is the real interest rate in because this is conventional system, uh, interest is part and parcel of uh, the system. And G is the government expenditure and this is how summing up these three, we, uh, we declare the aggregate demand of the economy. Uh, now how this uh, aggregate demand is uh, uh, met, uh, of, uh, obviously through production. And how production takes place, there are certain factors of production uh, which are uh, used as input and uh, they join together according to any uh, combination, according to any uh, prudent or efficient or appropriate combination of these factors, the output is produced which is Y. Uh, so this Y, 
which is uh, from the aggregate supply it tells us uh, national wh where does the national income come from whereas the aggregate demand equation indicates where does the national income go so uh, these two uh, uh, equations uh, presented in this slide uh, clearly depict as to the national income uh, national income where it comes from and where it goes so it comes from the productive activities uh, by combining the factors of production and it goes to the three sectors if there are three sectors in the economy the household sector the business sector and the public sector so demand of all these three sectors is met through production process or the output produced in the economy and if uh, <coughs> excuse me and if uh, this uh, uh, supply side is exactly equal to the demand side we call it equilibrium uh, this is known as equilibrium and the demand at this point is known as effective demand so effective demand is the concept when national output is equal to the demand for goods and services now in this uh, equation the uh, the actual a uh, variable which makes adjustment uh, which actually equilibrate the two sides which brings about equilibrium be between demand and supply is the interest rate real interest rate so real interest is the part and parcel of the conventional system a simple demand supply model of the uh, financial system is uh, the loanable funds because r when we concede <coughs> excuse me when uh, uh, r is considered as the real rate of interest so how real rate of interest is determined obviously by the funds by the fund market so in the fund market which can be rightly considered as loanable fund market so in the loanable fund market a simple macroeconomic concept there is one source which is known as supply of funds and the other source is demand for funds so uh, when these two forces interact each other they determine an equilibrium uh, real rate of interest in the economy and this real rate of interest is also known as price of fund because this is the price at which uh, the borrowers borrow and this is the price at which the lenders lend their money and if uh, this uh, is acceptable to both the parties it is known as equilibrium uh, price or equilibrium real interest so students demand for funds is uh, depicted by the investment line which is function of interest rate in the conventional framework so it comes from investment demand for loanable funds come from investment and uh, what is investment or who is investment uh, who is investment quote and quote who is investment investment is the business enterprise who want to expand their business who want to invest more money for the purpose of capital formation who want to grow their business activities and they are in need of funds now uh, well, certainly according to the uh, the according to the financial concept there are two major sources of funding number 1 equity and number 2 debt so this is debt part of the this is second part of the uh, demand for funds and obviously if uh, the business or enterprises are borrowing from the financial institutions uh, they will have to pay cost or price which is known as the real interest and uh, therefore we conclude that the demand for fund or demand for investment is generated by the business uh why they are generated in in order to uh, buy new plants new equipments or replacement or repairing of the equipments and plants uh be, be building new offices construction of the new building etc and if consumers buy if consumer borrow uh, this loan their purpose is consumption 
for example a consumer whose income sources are limited he may approach financial institutions in conventional banking system to borrow money against uh, some collateral arrangement and uh, his borrowing is for consumption purpose or if uh, the person uh, if consumer is uh, arranging some social function some so suppose the marriage of his daughter or son and he falls short of money he may approach financial institution to borrow money in order to meet the marriage expenses so so the main purpose of borrowing uh, of the consumer is consumption uh, buying of goods and services for consumption purpose now uh, the point is simple point is that this investment and the real rate of interest are negatively related inversely related how inversely related because r being the price of borrowing so if cost of borrowing is low people prefer to borrow more if cost of borrowing is high people prefer to borrow less therefore volume of investment will increase when the interest rate is low the volume of investment will decrease when the interest rate is high because this makes the cost of borrowing so conventional approach uh, indicates investment like this investment curve is also the demand curve for loanable funds on the other side the supply side the supply side of fund is saving those who save money they deposit their uh, savings in the financial institution and financial institutions are responsible for holding these uh, savings in the form of deposits and then financial institutions keeping in view the uh, withdrawing practices of the depositors they lend money uh, lend rest of the deposits at certain rate of interest so on one side they are paying interest to the depositors which is normally less on the other side they are lending money at interest rate which is normally high so the interest differential is also known as interest margin so this interest margin or interest differential uh, is also one of the indicators of the health of the economy but how far if this interest is large it means the demand of fund is high or possibly in in pakistan this interest margin is high but the problem in pakistan is more and more funds are being borrowed not for the expansion of productive capacity of the economy but for consumption purpose or for corruption purpose so this is a problem but generally this interest margin is uh, reasonably uh, is a reasonable amount and this uh, margin is not big in the advanced economy Uh, why it is not big uh, because the uh, policy makers in the advanced economy are cognizant of uh, their economic growth the requirement of their economies how they can compete with the rest of the world how business enterprises can be grown uh, uh, more prudently so that is why the interest margin in the west is low the other reason is that people uh, do not prefer to Uh, earn interest on their deposits by by piling up of deposits uh, charging interest is generally discouraged in the western economy because the other opportunities are better the other earning opportunities are better than earning interest on the deposits from the banks so that is why mm, the interest margin is low so these are two reasons number 1 uh, the trend of the depositors to invest uh, at the place where they can expect more return than rather than depositing it with the financial institutions uh, to get interest rate so generally returns from the projects are or the enterprises are better than the interest earned on the deposits in the financial institution so that is why and uh, the second reason is uh, the economic reason the institutional problem why the interest margin is high in the developing economies like pakistan and uh, the margin is low in the developed economies like usa uk and other similar economies <coughs> so uh, 
So households use their saving to make bank deposit, purchase bonds and other assets. These funds become available to firms to borrow uh, to finance investment spending. The government may also contribute to saving if it does not spend all the tax revenue it receives. So there are two major sources of uh, supply of funds. Number one, the individuals who save part of their income and they keep the, their, these savings in the form of deposits with the financial institutions. Uh, whereas the other source is uh, the government source. Uh, what is the government source? If government is collecting tax revenues and uh, these taxes are deposited in the banks, obviously this is also part of the saving which is collected from the economy by the public sector of the country. And how they are calculated by simple equation, uh, the types of saving conventional approaches, uh, Y minus T. Y minus T is the disposable income. Y is the actual income received by the individuals and T is the amount of tax paid to the government exchequer. So when uh, tax is paid and uh, the rest of the amount is now at the disposal of the consumer or the person who has earned this income. So people who have earned their income, they can either consume or save. So Y minus T is, uh, which is the term within bracket, is the disposable income. Out of this disposable income, the consumption is deducted. Uh, that is why uh, minus C is written. C stands for consumption expenditures. So ba basically there are two deductions in order to reach the saving. Number one, income earned minus taxes. So part is the part of the income goes to the uh, tax, uh, taxes and uh, whatever left over, whatever is left out of it, the consumption expenditures are met and uh, the difference which is known as saving, that saving has to be deposited in the financial institutions. And uh, the other part of saving is now this, this part of the saving which people or the individuals are uh, saving, this is known as uh, private saving. And there is another component of saving which is known as the public saving. What is public saving? The government collects taxes from the general public in different heads with different names uh, under different classification. So T, capital T is the tax revenues. And uh, out of these tax revenues, the government undertakes some expenditures of different types. And these expenditures, the difference of the revenues and the government expenditures uh, produce a surplus. If taxes are more than government expenditures, this will produce a surplus and this surplus uh, is known as public saving. So when we add them together, uh, as is given below, so one component, uh, this, this gives us total saving and uh, this is also known as national saving. So national saving, the concept of national saving is a total amount of saving by the nation as a whole. Uh, so part of this saving is coming from the individuals and the remaining part is coming from the public sector or the government, which is the difference of taxation and the government expenses. So students, when we add them together, this gives us and the last equation, the last equation on this slide, y minus c minus g, is simplification of the equation. We simplify the model. T, T cancel, T plus, T minus cancels, and the remaining terms are y minus c minus g. Now, in the conventional system, uh, delta is for change. Delta is for change. So if uh, uh, it is the, the, the last equation, the other th things are just for explanation. For example, delta L means the change in labor. 
and delta k means the change in capital and uh, delta y change in output means the productivity of labor. So if households are working as laborers, so on this slide, uh, what is the purpose? The, on this slide, uh, the productive activities which are generating income have been related with the ultimate change in consumption of the consumers. So productive activities generating income creating a delta of y. Delta of y means addition to the national income or the income in the economy and delta c change in consumption level in the economy and how change in consumption is measured again as I have repeatedly mentioned in the previous lecture it is it depends upon marginal propensity to consume. MPC is marginal propensity to consume and when it is multiplied by the term which is in the bracket delta y minus delta t this delta y minus delta t actually determines the total change in disposable income so uh, th out of this uh, disposable income how much is consumed that depends upon the size of mpc as we mentioned earlier if mpc is point Eight, it means 80% of this disposable income is consumed, the rest 20% will be saved and it will become the part of national saving from the individual uh, saving perspective. And if government is uh, levying more taxes, uh, then less disposable income will be available and less consumption will be undertaken. But on the and uh, there will be less consumption from the, but uh, there will be less consumption from the individuals or the private saving. But on the public side, since government collections are more, taxes are uh, increasing, and uh, these taxes, if they are increasing and they are exceeding the government expenditures, then part of national saving, which is actually reduced from the consumer side, from the individual side or from the private saving, uh, this is uh, compensated by the national saving, uh, by the public sector saving. So please let me sum it up now. If private individuals are saving less because of the high taxation, it means the resources are monetary resources are available with the public sector. So public sector will be the source of the sa uh, national saving because national saving has two major components private saving plus public saving so if public saving is reduced private saving will increase if private saving is reduced public saving will increase this is how we go dear students now uh, coming to after uh, a thorough discussion uh, of the conventional system of generating uh, income and then dividing income into uh, two components consumption and saving there's no mention of you know transfer payments there's no mention of uh, any uh, law to make payment in terms of charity to help the people or ensure the distribution process in the conventional system so on these four or five slides, we could not find even uh, even a line or even a mention of the transfer payments by the private individuals. But this is part and parcel of the Islamic economic system. You can also uh, look into the uh, the books on macroeconomics, and you will not find anything in terms of uh, charity or anything else in the macro macroeconomic national income accounts. Mm, yes, if in some of the books the transfer payments have been discussed, but these transfer payments are not by divine, and uh, this is uh, simply optional. There is no religious obligation. So it may exist, it may not exist. Now coming to the Islamic approach. So in the Islamic approach, we will derive certain equations and then we will be completing our lecture. 
So, Islamic approach, the product approach uh, first, because we are supposed to discuss two approaches, the product approach and the income approach. Islamic approach of uh, the product side, it measures the flows of currently produce halal goods and services in an economy. Uh, summing up the expenditures on the currently produce halal goods and services gives us this identity or this equation. Uh, students, you see the difference. You know, here there is special mention of the production of halal goods and the expenditures on the halal good on the halal goods produced in the economy. Now uh, in this equation GDP is similar to Y in the previous equations. The total production, the only difference is uh, Y in the conventional system includes all types of goods and services, but here in Islamic framework this Y is Y includes the production of halal goods only. The consumption here is also different. In the conventional system, this consumption includes all types of goods and services, irrespective of halal, haram. There is no distinction between halal and haram in the conventional framework. Consumption is consumption, uh, consumption of any type of goods. Uh, there is no such classification of halal and haram in conventional system. But here, the consumption uh, of the nation, total consumption of the national economy will basically be divided into uh, two. Uh, the consumption having two components in the economy, number one uh, C1 and number two CZ or CZ. C1 is uh, basically the consumption expenditures undertaken by the payment of zaka. So, personal consumption expenditures have two components, C1 and CZ. I have uh, specified uh, the C1, CZ here. C1 is the consumption of the individuals who pay zakat and CZ is the consumption expenditures who receive zakat. So, basically uh, in the economy, uh, the national level consumption is divided into two major components. One component includes consumption expenditures of the zakat payers and the other uh, uh, component includes the consumption by the zakat recipients. So, CZ symbol has been assigned to the zakat, uh, the consumption of zakat recipient and C1 symbol has been assigned to the consumption which is undertaken by the zakat payers. Uh, similarly, G is for, uh, I, I stands for gross private inv domestic investment and uh, G is government spending and as you know in this model although in the four sector open economy uh, exports and imports are also included we use symbol X for exports M for imports but here in this model in simple three sector model of the macro economy we are not assuming X and M in the model because it is closed economy, C, I and G are the only components included in the national economy. Uh, thus, GDP is equal to the net domestic product and the depreciation is also considered as ignorable or zero. Now, I, uh, consumption is clear, consumption has two major components, the consumption expenditures by the zakat payers and the consumption expenditures on different goods and services by the zakat recipient. I is the spending on new capital goods such as business, fixed investment, construction, inventories, all these are uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the all productive activities where the business enterprises spend their money. Uh, therefore, uh, in order to enhance the potential, potential capacity or potential capacity of uh, the economy, uh, this I 
is a very important component. So productive capacity can be expanded by the addition of volume of investment in the economy which actually is addition to the existing stock of capital and uh, existing stock of capital if increases that will enhance uh, productive capacity of the economy or potential capacity of the economy. So national income will be is likely to increase. G includes expenditures of the federal government on national defense, internal security, external security, emolument, government investment, public consumption expenditures and also the expenditures by the state on the local government and many other expenses which obviously cannot be listed all uh, in single slide. So just to give you the example, this is where the government generally spend uh, its income or its revenues. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, an Islamic state will definitely be involved in foreign sector, foreign trade, but for simplicity, uh, we have ignored, we have excluded uh, the X minus M uh, term because Islamic economy is uh, will not be an island independent of rest of the world. Islamic economy will definitely uh, be interacting with rest of the world, but you know when uh, foreign sector is included, then uh, the model macroeconomic model becomes complicated in the sense. Uh, domestically, you may be following the Islamic uh, economic system, but uh, when you are trading with rest of the world, this X minus M uh, may involve some riba based or some other non prohibited modes of financing activities or transactions and therefore uh, the macroeconomic system will be difficult to explain. So in order to keep our model simple, we are assuming uh, the model without uh, the foreign sector. This is just our uh, assumption. It is not that uh, the Islamic macroeconomy will be an island independent of rest of the world. No, this cannot happen these, these days. Uh, the income approach. This approach measures the income received by the factors of production. Now this uh, income which is received by the factor of production can be in terms of wages if the person is working as worker or laborer. He receives salaries if he is working laborer or the worker. Income from Assets, this can be another source of income. Assets mean the assets invested in accordance with the Islamic modes of finance either as a shareholder, partner or as, uh, as an arrangement of mudarba. So whatever can be the mode. Similarly, the profit earning. The profit, uh, if, uh, if uh, the profit uh, obviously if the person is working as an entrepreneur, or uh, if he has invested money and uh, uh, on the completion of certain economic cycle when the, uh, the mudarib or the rebel mal or when under musharka arrangement the partners sit together and distribute profit in accordance with the agreed formula this is also one of the income sources. So uh, well let us now uh, assign certain symbols uh, to these concepts of income, income approach uh, so that when we develop a mathematical model, these symbols will be of help, uh, these symbols will be useful. Uh, wages and salaries, the income from these two sources has been assigned symbol YW. So YW uh, shows the income from wages and salaries. Um, uh, obviously, the condition is the same. This is one of the basic uh, assumption in Islamic model that this income, these salaries are received uh, not from cheating, uh, not by working less and uh, uh, through uh, pressure through the 
ट्रेड यूनियन और लेबर यूनियन रिसीविंग हाई इनकम एंड हायर बेनिफिट्स ऑब्वियसली दिस इज़ नॉट हलाल सो दी ओनली मेजर वन ऑफ द मेजर एजम्पन फॉर द इनकम और वेज इज अर्न बाई द पर्सन इन इस्लामिक फ्रेम वर्क इज दैट ही हैज़ अर्न इज इनकम फ्राम हलाल सोर्स एंड ही हैज़ चूज हलाल मीन्स एंड ही हैज़ पुट इज ड्यू एफर्ट्स इन जनरेटिंग दिस इनकम एंड अर्निंग दिस इनकम सो वाई डब्ल्यू एज देयर फोर द इनकम अर्न थ्रू वेजेज एंड सैलरीज द अदर साइड ऑफ द इनकम इज इनकम फ्राम एसेट्स कंसिस्ट ऑफ रेंटल पेमेंट फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ द पर्सन हैज रेंटेड इज हाउस rented his car rented his other property and he is regularly receiving the rental payments to so this rental income so we are assigning the symbol y a y is generally denomination for income and a is for assets so w is for wage and salaries and a is for assets and uh, uh, this income from assets can also be uh, in terms of the returns from the financial institutions where uh, the person and the individuals have deposited their money and the financial institutions utilize these deposits on halal modes of finance the modes of finance which are permissible in accordance with the islamic teachings or the islamic financial system uh, the another source of income of uh, another source of income in an islamic framework is uh, the income from profits for example as i mentioned earlier if uh, the persons are working if the individuals are working as entrepreneurs somewhere or they are uh, the management they make the management of the financial institutions now uh, these three major sources of income have been classified and they have been uh, assigned symbols like uh, y pi this symbol is pi pi y subscript pi pi stands for profit so income from profit sources income from assets income from wages these are three major sources so the total income from the factor income approach according to the factor income approach in islamic framework uh, has three components so total national income of the islamic economy has three major components number one some of the people in the economy would be earning wages by putting their efforts in halal means in the productive activities where output is produced where output of halal goods and services is produced the other component income from assets for example the rental income or the money invested in the bank where banks utilize these deposits for halal purposes using permissible modes of finance and the profit earned for example if uh, some investment has been undertaken with partnership or mudarba uh, and uh, the profit is earned at the end of the period obviously if loss is earned this y pi will carry minus sign and if there is loss uh, from the assets then y a will carry minus sign because uh, the loss and the profits are to be adjusted in the national income so uh, students this is how we will be differentiating between the islamic uh, uh, national income accounts equation and the conventional uh, income accounts equation so our gdp therefore our total gdp will be equation number 3 so this is equation 3 is further development of equation 2 what is the difference in the uh, equation 2 we have ignored the depreciation and the indirect taxes but in equation 3 we have also included these two components which will be later on dropped because this is Uh, one of the assumptions of uh, our model which we are going to build that the indirect taxes and the depreciation are uh, zero so to simplify our analysis we shall assume that both the indirect taxes and the depreciation are zero then the last two uh, components of the equation 
will be dropped T I N D and depreciation sigma the small letter sigma uh, is for depreciation and T I N D is the indirect taxes then uh, uh, the disposition of this national income how this national income will be utilized uh, we uh, as we uh, decompose GDP and national income into three components in conventional system C plus I plus G uh, but here uh, this uh, income is divided into th three components and in conventional system if the uh, con if the individual uh, con income is divided it is divided into uh, three major components as well number one uh, the income minus tax one component uh, the consumption undertaken and the saving the in conventional framework this is how we divide we subtract taxes from the income at the first stage at the second stage we calculate the consumption expenditures and the third stage the leftover amount is calculated which is known as the saving in the economy private saving in the economy if you remember we calculated private saving uh, thus, national income in he here in Islamic framework, the national income Y is used number one for consumption purpose, and this is the consumption of the zakat payers, and and uh, some of the amount will be saved and which will be further utilized for the purpose of investment somewhere and uh, Z is the zakat payment so this is the uh, income equation for the zakat payer so Z is the zakat payment and T is the net tax payments after deducting domestic transfer payments and the subsidies and the other things so uh, in Islamic framework uh, the national income the income which is earned will be utilized in four heads number one uh, consumption purpose and C1 we are using symbol for the uh, the zakat payer and S is for saving and Z is the zakat payment by this by these individuals and T tax is paid to the government so this is how our national income so this is the source of income and this is the source of allocation of the income so students let us now conclude what we have discussed so far so in these lectures, this, this is just one part of the lecture series on the development of macro model in uh, Islamic framework. This was the first lecture. We introduced conventional macroeconomic uh, sources of income and the conventional ways of spending money. And we differentiated uh, these two from the Islamic uh, equation, Islamic perspective, where we are introducing the new uh, equation. So, in Islamic framework, there are uh, th three major sources of income. Number one, income earned through wages. Number two, income earned through profits. And number four, income uh, number three, income earned through assets. So, these three uh, joined together may make the GDP of the economy, and within which the indirect taxes and the depreciation are included. If we drop these uh, depreciation and the indirect taxes, then the equation becomes very simple as uh, uh, 2. So if indirect taxes and depreciation is added, then equation 3 makes the GDP. But And then the, we discussed how the income, this income is spent on four heads. So with these words, uh, dear students, we stop here and inshallah uh, we will meet again in the next lecture with further development of this model because this is just one part of the model which we have developed here. It is, we, we have discussed national income, where it comes from and where it goes in Islamic economy. Uh, we stop here, inshallah, in the next lecture we will continue. Thank you. Allah Hafiz.